Hi everyone, in today's Gibbs Cam video, we're gonna show you how to use fixture or fixture display only or stock and stock display only and how to detect crashes. So you can see here I have my stock size, which is round, and I have my part that I actually want to machine right here. And of course, this is going to be my fixtures. So first of all, I'm going to uh, look at my fixtures. I'm going to uh, right click and you can go to show properties or show properties of selected. This would be if you have multiple properties selected. So if I selected both of these and then did show properties of selected, you'd see both of them there. But we're going to do each one separately for the moment. So I'm going to right click, go to show properties. You can give it a name, which I did here. And I'm going to say this is fixture display only. And normally fixtures, I put the cord height at about 10 thousandths uh, if you're running in inches. That will uh, speed things up in the rendering as well as your file size will be a lot smaller. So make sure you hit click apply. Now I'm going to click on the uh, bottom plate where I'm mounting it to. And this one I'm going to also say fixture display only. And I'm going to just call it, we'll just rename this as the... Uh, mounting mounting plate so we'll click apply on there okay so now i'm going to open up my tools and i have three tools my first tool is a one inch rough end mill second tool is a one inch finish end mill and my last tool is a three quarter inch spot drill combination spot drill uh, chamfer tool let me open up my cam section here and the first operation I'm going to do is volume mill. I have everything filled out here. The depth I'm going to go to 1.875. This is a two inch thick part. I'm staying off the bottom a little bit so we could flip it over and, and uh, face off the other end. Uh, rapid do half inch above the part because this is Z0 on the top. And my material, of course, is zero on the top. And half inch when we're done, there's my depth. And I'm going to go a desired step of about one inch there. And I'm going to hit hit flats after the pass on here. So that way it'll get the flats on everything there. I'm going to leave a little bit of stock and I click on use stock. Now the second process is going to be my one inch finish end mill. Again, everything here is about the same. I'm just going to do a arc in, arc off and do not hit flats. And we're, that's going to finish the walls on the sides as well as the inside and the pockets. Then my last operation is going to be the spot drill chamfer tool. We're going to go down about 300 thou and I'm going to offset it by uh, seven, uh, 3 sixteenths to cut the chamfers. And as you can see before we do that, let me bring out my stock. So this is going to be my stock size. So let's put that back in the body bag. Bring this back out so i'm going to click on my part and click on do it it's going to take about 10 seconds here to do that and i have my part finished there now let's do cut part rendering i'm going to turn uh, crash detection collision de checking off for the moment and i'm going to run this part you can see it's cutting but the problem is as you can see i'm cutting a lot of air And of course, it's cutting right through my fixtures. We'll let it finish here. Everything looks pretty good, other than you can see the tools crashing into the fixtures there, but it's not giving me a warning. So I'm going to click on, right click on here, go down to the settings. And there's some settings you can do for collision detection between your tools and the fixtures. So I'm going to click on stop animation. So it's going to stop every time it finds a collision. And you can also uh, click on a few other choices here. Cuts above. If you want to do a beep, you'll do that and your, your speaker on your PC will beep. And you can give it a collision uh, detection, how close you want it to get, and gouge tolerance there. So you can kind of set all that kind of stuff. So now I'm going to turn on 
my collision detection. I'm going to rewind. And you can see it says detected. It detected something running into, of course, my fixture, which is that. But it's just giving you a detection to tell you it did crash into something. So click OK. And you can just continue on. And if you click on cancel, you can just do play and play the rest of the way through. And our part is finished there. Okay, so we want to uh, fix what's going on here. Uh, you can see the toolpath, of course, is crashing into our fixtures there. And the reason why they're crashing into the fixtures is because, let me turn our cam off. If I go to my bolts here, my studs that I'm holding this down, and I go to the show properties, you can see I have it set for a fixture, but it's set for display only. So what that means is Gibbs doesn't really see this as a fixture so much when it's running the toolpath, and so it's crashing into that. So cancel that. So I want Gibbs to create the toolpath. If I bring up the toolpath again, you'll see. You'll see here's the toolpath, and as you can see, it's running right through my fixtures. Because we set the fixtures as display only, and what we want to do is set it to fixture. So if I right-click again, go to show properties, this time I'm going to set it as fixture. Now normally I don't set it as fixture if I know something's out of the way and it's and uh, uh, it's not going to run into that because it does take a little bit longer to process the toolpath when it's set for a fixture because and now Gibbs is looking at this as an actual fixture fixture whereas fixture display only only shows it as a fixture when you're running simulation so now I have this set as fixture I'll click apply now let's run this toolpath again. So I'll bring this back up and I'll just click on redo this time. And you can see now it's going around our bolts. But still, if I render this again, you're going to see we're still cutting lots of air. So we don't want to cut air, and the reason it's doing that, let me put this in the body bag, and bring back our actual stock. So if I right click on the stock and go show properties, you can see this is set for stock display only. So Gibbs is not looking at this as if it was stock you're starting to cut from. It just recognizes this as stock when you run the simulation. So that's why it looks like this when you're running the simulation. But Gibbs is not looking at this to create a toolpath for it. So let's fix that. So I'm going to right click, go to show properties. This time I'm going to click on stock and apply. This time Gibbs knows this is actually stock. And so we shouldn't be cutting air outside here when this is the actual stock. If I don't have this as uh, set for stock, then it's looking at our stock size based on our document control here. So now this is set for stock. Let's bring back our part. And we're going to do redo. And now you can see it's recognizing this piece as stock. So if I, we run our toolpath again, I'm going to turn collision checking off for the moment. And now you can see it's actually starting from our stock. Speed that up. And of course it's going around our fixtures. Okay, looks pretty good, but let's do some collision checking. So I'm going to turn Collision checking on, rewind, click play, and you can see it says, oh, there's a collision there. I'm not really seeing anything. 
but I can see that it brought up collision checking. So there's something that's going to run into the fixture. I'll just click OK and let it continue on. It found another one, found another one, found another one. Each time it goes around there, when it gets close to the bolts, you're going to see that it is finding a collision. So we'll let it finish off here. So you're probably wondering, well, where's the collision? Because I don't really see it hitting the part there. So if we turn on, turn off cut part rendering, and we go up to this op sim, the drop down menu, you'll see one that says tool sim. So if I run this, let's run this. And of course you can control this back or forth as you want. You can stop and go backwards, things like that. But let's just let it run through. Okay, I'm going to kind of zoom this up a little bit. We're going to find where it's uh, running into our fixture. And if I look closely here, it's a little bit hard to see. You can see this line. This is a rapid move because it's dashed. And you can see it's running right through the bolt there. Same with this one, same with this one. So what it looks like to me is I don't have my clearance high enough to clear these bolts. So let's go back to OpSim. We'll turn this off for a moment. Now I'm going to go to my document control, but before I do that, let's open up by this uh, process again, our volume mill. And I have a half inch uh, clearance on there, but let's look at the top of the bolts just to see how high those are. If I alt click, you can see that's 1.187. So Obviously my clearance is not reaching up to go up and over the bolts there. So I'm going to have a clearance of 1.250, 1 1.250 when we're done. And we'll redo that operation. Okay, now we'll run the uh, machine sim and see what we have. And I have a collision checking on, as you can see here. And now I'm not getting any alarms. And my part looks pretty good there. Now there's a couple of things you can do on... Uh, uh, the collision checking and the clearance on here just by opening up the processes. Now if I go to, my, go to my solids tab, you can see I have my cut tolerance there. Of course, volume mill is just a roughing operation, so I have my cut tolerance at 5 thou, and my fixture clearance I have 100 thou. So basically I'm saying stay away from all the fixtures by 100 thou there. And, of course, you could leave surface stock if you're uh, doing other type of milling as well, maybe surfacing in that. You can also click on Avoid Holder and Shank Collisions, and you can give it a tolerance there. But if you're going to do that, make sure the tool you're using is correct for what you have in your machine. Otherwise, it's really not going to do any good. Uh, so you can all also click on that and decide not to use that. Also notice my tool number two, which is my finish end mill, and you can see that should be green. So everything here is green. It's cutting the outside here, cutting the inside, but it's not cutting these pockets in here. It's not taking a finish pass on the wall. The reason for that, let me open up process two, is we have do not hit flats. We're telling it to go one and seven eighths deep, and that means it's going to pass these up and go on the outside because these are only one inch deep. So if I click on, first let's do add uh, flats by adding passes. We'll redo that. And if we run machine sim again, let's rewind. And I have it stopping at tool number two, so we'll let it rough this out first. All right, we'll slow it down. Now you'll see what it's doing with tool number two. 
Uh, you'll notice it's cutting halfway down. Finishing. Halfway down. Finishing. And it's cutting these two. And there's our finish. So I don't want it to step down on here, so I'm going to open up process number two again and change this to hit flats after each pass. So we'll redo that. And run operation sim. Again, we'll let it rough out. Come back and finish. Now this time, well, you can see tool number two reaches the full depth in one pass. Same with the inside and same with all four pockets. and our chamfers. A few more items on here. If I go to my cut part rendering, you can see this looks pretty good, but it's a little faceted. If I go to the blue area on my cut part render, right click, go down to settings. Right now I have it set for custom, so custom you can put in your own values there. If I click on fast and click apply, you can see it'll go faster. Let me just turn it up there. It'll cut much faster when you have it set for fast. I'll let it finish off there. And it's even more faceted there. Now sometimes I put it on fast if I just want to see the tool path pretty fast to see if this is what I'm after. And then I'll change it back. So if we want to make it look a little bit better, go back to settings. This time I'm going to go to Accurate, make sure you click Apply. And it still should run pretty fast, but it'll be a lot smoother. Now the difference between fast and accurate, uh, especially when you're doing surfacing, uh, it'll take a lot longer to render. So um, when you're doing like three axis parts and five axis parts and not surfacing, then there won't be a lot of change in there. But you can see it's a lot smoother now. So that's some changes there. So don't forget to set these what you like here and use this collision checking. And like I say, you can always click on Tool Sim and let it run through your toolpath there. And you can always check it there, especially if you're running it and you get a collision checking on there. You can always look at the toolpath. Like I say, you can run it up and down, forward and backwards on the tool to see what it's actually doing. And you can see whether you're avoiding fixtures or not. In this case, you can see my clearance is above the uh, fixtures there. So it looks pretty good. So anyway, just some tips and tricks today on uh, using fixture, fixture display only, stock, stock display only, just by right clicking on your part and going to its properties and changing it there. Uh, just to make sure you have it set correctly because I see a lot of uh, Gibbscam users uh, always click on fixture and stock when they really don't need to and it takes more time to uh, process the tool path when they really don't need to. Uh, if you're putting this in a say a Kurt Vice or whatever something like that you really don't need to set the vice as fixture. You can usually set the vice as just fixture display only and it'll run the toolpath uh, faster and calculate much faster. So thank you for watching. Hope this helps.